We have a few tests for our list items, but we still need the ability to toggle items to mark them complete. I'll collapse the existing test so we can focus on some new code. We'll start with a new test to make sure we can make an incomplete item complete. We'll need a route to stub the API call that updates our item. We could hard code the data for our stub like we've done in previous tests, but let's see how we can access our fixture data and use a modified version of that to set up our route. We'll access the same fixture data that we're using to seed our application state by using sci.fixture, passing it to do's to access the to do's file. Now we can chain a then to fixture, and then accepts a function that will receive our fixture data as an argument, allowing us to work with the data like we would any other. We'll use a modified version of the first item in the list to set up our route. Let's start by defining a constant called target. It's often helpful when manipulating data to have access to a utility library. Lucky for us, Cypress comes bundled with Lodash. Let's use it here to get the first item in the to-dos array. We can access Lodash through Cypress with an uppercase C dot underscore, and we'll use Lodash's head function here, passing in to-dos. Now target is a single to-do taken from the head of our array. Now we can use it to define our route. We'll create a route for a put, and we'll create the URL with string interpolation. So we'll put slash API slash to-dos in backticks instead of single quotes, and we'll use target.id as the last segment of the URL. For the response body, we want an updated version of the original to-do, so we can reach for Lodash again to help. We'll access Lodash from Cypress, again with an uppercase C, and we'll merge the original item with an object literal with an isComplete property set to true. This gives us a route where the first item in the fixture is slightly modified and passed back so that its isComplete field is set to true. Now that our fixture is ready to go, we can get the list items, select the first item, and find the checkbox element with the class name toggle. Then we'll chain on a click to check the checkbox. We also need to make some assertions about the first item. Since we issued a find command, we've changed the subject. Let's add an alias so we can easily get back to the first list item for our assertions. After the first command, we'll add an as, and we'll call this alias first to do. We can break off the next part of the chain and start this new chain with a get using our alias. At the end of this chain, we'll add an assertion for the checkbox, asserting that it should be checked. And then we'll use a get again with our alias to assert that the first item has the class completed. Finally, we'll add another get, this time for the to-do count element in the footer, and verify that it contains a two. When we run the test, we'll see it fail since we haven't implemented the functionality yet. Let's code our feature and get this test to pass. We'll start by adding a function in the service file. We'll call it update to-do, and it will accept a to-do object and use axios.put to issue a put request. The API endpoint will be specific to this to-do based on its ID, and then we'll pass in the supplied to-do as the body of the request. In the to-do app component, we can update our service import to include the update to-do function. Then in the body of the component class, we'll create a handle toggle method that accepts a to-do ID. We'll use the ID to find the to-do we wish to change from state. Then we'll create an updated to-do by spreading the original to-do into a new object literal and supplying a new is complete value that is the result of negating the existing value. Now we can call update to-do passing in our updated to-do object and use it then to handle a successful result. We'll destructure the response to get the data value, which in this case is our new to-do. We want to replace the existing version of this to-do with the updated to-do obtained from our API response. We'll use the ID against the existing list of to-dos to figure out which item to replace by index. Now we'll create a new to-dos array. We'll spread the items from the existing array from the first item up to our target index. Then we'll insert our updated to-do by adding data as an array item. Then we'll spread out the remaining items from the source array. Now we use set state to replace the existing to-dos with this updated array. We'll ensure the proper context by binding our new method to this in the constructor. And in the render method, we'll pass handle toggle into to-do list. In the to-do list component, we'll pass this through to the to-do item component. And in to-do item, we'll wire this up by adding an onChange handler for the checkbox, and we'll pass it props.id. Now everything is connected, so we can run our test again to see if our implementation is solid. When the test runs, we see a delay, and we have a failed assertion. It looks like something is wrong with our code. Let's dig into this and see if we can debug the application. The obvious place to start is with the failed assertion. Hovering over it in the command log highlights the item we've made an assertion against, and we can clearly see it says three to-dos left when our expectation was for two. Working our way up the command log, we can verify that the passing assertions are reflected in the app preview. And when we hover over the XHR stub, we can see the app preview is changing. This is flipping between the snapshot taken before the request and after the request resolved. Let's pin this command and see what's happening. 
With this pinned, we can choose between request and response snapshots for the app preview. Comparing these makes it clear that our list is longer after the API call. We have two buy milk items. The first one is set to complete like we were looking for, and the second one is still showing as incomplete like when we started. It appears that instead of replacing our to-do, we've added another one. Let's figure out why. If we open DevTools, we can take a closer look at the XHR call. Here, we can expand the response and verify that our application got the response we expected. It's a single item with an ID of one and the isComplete field is true. Our problem is clearly happening when we get our response back. So let's work on debugging our application code. Back in our to-do app component, let's update the then for our update to-do call so we can see what's happening with our response. At the top of the function, we'll add a debugger statement and save the file. Back in the Cypress runner, we'll leave the dev tools open and run our test again. This time when our test runs, it will be paused in debugger and show our source code on the line where we added the debugger statement. We can see the data value is still the object we're expecting, so let's see what's happening. We'll click to step over the next function call and we'll move forward in the code. We can hover over this.state.todos and see that it's the four items we expect it to be. When we step over again, we'll see that our target index value is zero, which is what we expect for the first item in an array. When we step over again, we'll see that our new to-do array has been created. Now we can see that to-dos has a length of five, which is not what we want. By hovering over to-dos, we can see that the first two items in the array have the same name and the same ID. I think we've found our problem. There's something wrong with the code we used to create that new array. We can resume execution and let the test run through to the end. Let's run this in the debugger one more time. Let's step over the code until we get to the line where we update the application through set state. Just to confirm that we've identified the source of the problem, let's open the console tab. We can access to-dos by typing it in here. We also have the ability to manipulate this data, so we could also reassign to-dos. As you may recall from when we discovered our duplication, the first item in the list was complete as expected, and the second one was still showing as incomplete. Let's assign to-dos a new value where we keep the first correct item and skip the second duplicate item. We'll just assign it a new array where we keep the first item and skip over the second by spreading out the items starting at index two. We'll see that to-dos now has four items. With that reassignment done, let's resume execution and see if it makes a difference in our test. That did the trick. Now we know for sure that we're making a mistake when creating our array. Let's close DevTools and fix our array creation code. Upon inspection, it looks like our duplicate to-do is coming from the second slice in our code. We're not skipping the item from the original array that we're trying to replace. The fix for this is just to add one to the target index here. With a fix in place, let's run the test again and make sure we got it right this time. It works. Our test is passing and our app preview looks like what we're expecting. It's obvious that this code is pretty error prone and even though we have it working now, it's not the most readable code. Since we have a test that we know will catch issues with our implementation, we can safely refactor this. Instead of manually creating a new array, Let's use map to replace our item in a less error prone way. We can remove this new array and in its place, we'll call map on state.todos. In our mapping function, we'll compare the todos ID to the updated items ID. If the IDs match, we'll return the updated item and in all other cases, we'll just return the existing todo. We no longer need the index for the item we wish to replace, so we can remove this code. And we can also remove the debugger statement since we don't need that anymore. This code has fewer moving parts and should be easier to maintain. Let's just verify that it works by running our test again. And it looks like everything's good. Through a combination of the Cypress UI and Chrome's DevTools, our test has made it relatively painless to identify, track down, and fix a bug in our code. Beyond the dev time benefits that we just enjoyed, we're also left with a test that will continue to detect and help us fix any issues we might introduce in the future.